Welcome to St. Andrew United Church of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome, always. The month of June is Pride Month. Pride for the LGBTQ plus community and allies is a month-long time of celebration, protest, and acts of political activism. Nearly every city has some sort of big event. We at St. Andrew have participated in two Pride Festivals here in Louisville every year for quite some time now. And this year, we have felt sad that the festivals and the parade had to be canceled. And so we honor Pride in our little way by turning on our rainbow lights for today's service. And I'll tell you a little bit more about Pride and its history in the service today, too. It's especially appropriate with today's gospel lesson, which is about welcoming Jesus and welcoming prophets. Today, like last week, we also welcome some new voices to our worship service. The members of our worship team and some of their family members are making some videos of parts of the service that are a part of our liturgy. The word liturgy in Greek literally means work of the people. So thank you to Elaine Caldwell, who was our reader last week, and thank you to Walter and Diane Snowa, who are our readers for today. And thank you to you, our listeners, for taking this time to be with us in worship. Welcome to you, a holy welcome. Join with me now in the call to worship. God calls into our midst those who are beloved in all their diversity. We welcome them. God calls into our midst all those who are vulnerable, in need of teaching, healing, and shelter. We welcome them. God calls into our midst all those with a word of challenge that proclaims God's kingdom for all. We welcome them. Let us worship God who calls us to be prophets of welcome. Alleluia. Please join me in the invocation. Lord, Holy One who calls us into community and invites us to welcome your prophets and your messengers. Let us experience your welcome to us, gathered in various places, but joined in this moment. Show us that we are beloved and honored in your presence and in this community. Show us how to put our resources to the service of all. Help us to know that the cup of water given in your name nourishes the one who gives and the one who receives. Satisfy our thirst to know your presence here and now. To the glory of God. Amen.
scripture this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus has been telling his disciples about the mission that lies ahead of them and also the difficulties where that will happen. He concludes with these words, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, None of these will lose their reward. May God bless this reading of God's Word.
Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Such a short and simple line from scripture from the beginning of today's reading, and yet it's so profound because it says so much. We welcome Christ, we welcome God, by welcoming one another. It's so simple and yet so hard to do. We hear it and we say, well, yes, of course, we should welcome others. But the scripture says how we welcome others is connected to how we welcome God. Seeing God in others is something much easier to say than it is to practice. Because, of course, seeing God in others means seeing God in all others. And that's where it gets hard. If you don't think so, just think about this. Think of someone you know personally and really dislike. Think of the people in this election that you would never vote for in a million years. Think of people on Facebook who say things that are polar opposite to everything you believe in. Think of people who scare you. Think of people who have treated you badly. Think of people you are estranged from. Think of people that when you're honest, you know you feel some prejudice toward them. All of that, it's all of those people and more that are really hard for us to imagine welcoming as we would welcome Christ. And isn't part of the problem that we get caught up in how the other person is going to behave or speak as if what they do or how they respond changes our responsibility to be welcoming. Now, if we are just welcoming to people who are going to be gracious back, well, how hard is that? It doesn't take a strong faith to be able to do that. I believe that gazing upon someone with the intent to see Jesus in them is more about me than it is about them. It's a gift I can give another person, yes, but more importantly, it's a way of living that can change me. It's a way that can change you. In the same way that prayer is more about our need to pray than it is about God's need for us to pray. Welcoming others as Christ is more about our need to cultivate that love in our hearts when we gaze upon people than it is about their need to see our love for them. As I was thinking again about this idea of welcoming others as Christ, because of course we've talked about it lots of times, I got thinking though about how people welcome one another in other cultures, and how perhaps now more than ever is the time to borrow some of those rituals, since we're living in a time when handshake and hugs are not going to be socially acceptable all the time the way they once were. We're going to have to develop some new ways to greet each other and to pick up on cues for what is okay from other people. 
It really is a time to cultivate some welcoming practices that are genuine and caring without touching the person. That makes it more of a challenge. There have been a number of times in worship at St. Andrew in which I have invited you to use the greeting Namaste with one another. Namaste is used in India and Cambodia and other places as well, but it came from India. It's a putting together of the hands and bowing to the person while saying the words, the divine in me sees the divine in you. It's an actual reminder of how a welcome can become a holy moment. The divine in me sees the divine in you. In Malaysia, they welcome people by bowing and then placing the right hand on their heart as a show of respect. Wouldn't that be a beautiful way to welcome someone? To bow to them? And then put your hand on your heart with the idea of respect in your mind? And especially if you looked them in the eyes when you place your hand on your heart. In Japan, bowing is also a way of welcome and has been for many, many centuries. In Kenya, there is a greeting that is called a jumping dance, but it's literally a jump straight up. I kind of like that one because it almost looks like I'm saying I'm really excited to see you. Isn't that a nice welcome? Welcome! <laughs> it could be fun for some of us. In Micronesia, raising the eyebrows is a simple way of saying hi and acknowledging the other person's presence. One of the best ways that I know to convey genuine care for someone is to look them in the eyes. People that are homeless on the streets often report that one of the hardest things to deal with is that people don't make eye contact with them. I think whatever gesture you decide to use to welcome people, you will want to add a pause with some eye contact to the gesture, especially now that our smiles are so often covered with masks. You know of a time probably when somebody shook your hand and they, they held your hand a little longer and looked you in the eyes. Good to see you. And it felt more welcoming just because of that little bit of lingering and that looking you in the eyes. It felt more welcoming. How might you add that into the way you welcome people now? And what if we saw looking upon others with a loving eye as not just a way to welcome them, but as a way to pray? A smile can be a quick thing, a flash at someone, but to look lovingly at people with our eyes, it, that takes a longer pause. But it can be a spiritual pause when we remind ourselves to look upon the other and think about them as a child of God, loved by God as much as I'm loved by God. If you're feeling upset with someone, try looking on that person with great affection and see what happens, not just to them, but to you. It can be a prayer discipline to look with the eyes of Jesus. We're told that Jesus looked with love upon the rich young man who wanted to follow him but was unable to give up his wealth. Jesus looked upon him with love. And Jesus also looked with a mother's loving eyes upon Jerusalem, standing at the entrance to the city, gazing at Jerusalem with loving eyes, saying, how often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings gazing at the city with loving eyes. What if we 
tried gazing at others with the eyes of Jesus more often. I really liked the term that was in our call to worship today, prophets of welcome. That call to worship is something that I found on our United Church of Christ website. Prophets of welcome. What if we saw ourselves as prophets of welcome, messengers of welcome, offering a holy welcome? Often people think of a prophet as someone who foretells the future, but that's not the biblical understanding of prophets. A prophet was someone who spoke a deep truth to the people. A deep truth that came because of their faith in God and their listening to God. What if we saw ourselves as prophets of welcome, called to convey deep truth about God to others, the truth that they are loved by God? We've been doing a good job of being welcoming to all at St. Andrew for many years. We're certainly not perfect, but we've done a really good job. But what's the next step? How might we move from being friendly church people, welcoming wonderful church people, to prophets of welcome? What if we saw ourselves as offering a holy welcome? How might that be different than just being friendly? Ironically, the term prophet of welcome, messenger of welcome, to me has a connotation of being something that we do outside the church walls. When you think of being, go and be a prophet of welcome, we think of that as outside the church walls. And so how convenient for us now that we're always outside the church walls. What better time than now to work on how to be prophets of welcome outside of the church building? One of the times when I really witnessed St. Andrew being prophets of welcome outside of the church, offering a holy welcome, was at the Pride Festival, both during the parade and in our booth, where people were constantly stopping by the booth to talk to us. When we were in the parade, we carried a sign with our church name on it, and we walked with the other UCC churches that carried their church banners too. And there were other churches and other denominations that were near us too. Not a lot, but there were some. And when the crowds saw a church sign coming, they cheered and you could feel the gratitude coming from the crowd that there were churches there. You could literally feel it. And so many people, even from the sidelines of the parade, made eye contact with us. And they said, thank you for being here. It felt like being prophets of welcome, deliverers of the truth that the LGBTQ community's oppression and inequality is seen by us and by God, and that the community is loved by us and by God. It felt like we were delivering that message for that day. And the crowd was also filled with prophets of welcoming. Gathering as a community to speak prophetically, the crowd was speaking truth, truths of inequality and oppression that are hard to hear but that must be heard for change to happen. Pride began when the LGBTQ prophets shared their truth, their angry truth at the Stonewall Riots. In 1969, police raided the Stonewall Inn, which was a gay bar in New York City. At that time, you could be arrested simply for being gay. Bars could be broken up simply because gay people were there. And in 1969, a group of folks had had too much and they started to riot in protest. Media coverage of the riots allowed others to see the struggle 
in fighting for their rights that the LGBTQ community was going through. And so the uprising became a catalyst for an emerging gay rights movement as organizations were formed, modeled after the civil rights movement and the women's rights movement. Members held protests, they met with political leaders, they interrupted public meetings to hold those leaders accountable. And a year after the Stonewall riots, the nation's first gay pride marches were held. In 2009, President Obama officially declared June as Pride Month. And it's been that way ever since. Throughout history, periods of upheaval moments have often given birth to genuine progress and change. Pride Month commemorates a time like that, where riots and protests created awareness of deep-seated problems. And it energized people to take action to create substantial change. And so, of course, the story of pride is different but similar to the story that's happening now with racism in our country. It often takes moments of upheaval and protest in society for awareness to rise and to give birth to genuine progress and change. And so as we work on being prophets of welcome, wherever we find ourselves, finding new ways to greet people, to gaze upon people with the eyes of love, as if they were Christ, to be creative in showing others a holy welcome through our gestures and our words however we might choose to do that. Let us also work together to see the prophet in others, to hear the truth that is being spoken to us from others, truth that we need to hear. And so let us believe in a new way that God is still speaking. And let us pledge together to keep listening. Amen. Join with me now as we come to God in prayer. Let's bow our heads. Dear God of vast and diverse creation, you reveal yourself to us in every color of the rainbow. Since the earliest days, you have made human diversity manifest. Since the beginning, you have shown yourself to us in love. So forgive us, God, for closing off your love to others. Help us, we pray, to become prophets of welcome, heralders of inclusion and diversity, knowing that the richness of humanity reveals more and more of your expansive beauty and multiplicity. In your great wisdom, you have made us with the same breadth of expression as the plants and the animals, embedded with beauty and complexity. You created peoples and cultures with gender as diverse as your rainbow, and in your goodness, you have included those people in your stories as markers for the paths of our own story. Thank you for the eunuchs, the misfits, the strangers in strange lands. Thank you that your sacrifice was not just for the worthy. Thank you that you came to show us the path to a better world. And in the person of Jesus Christ, you came to us and did not discriminate. You came for the hungry, the thirsty, the wasting in prison for those beaten and left to die at the side of the road. You came for the sick, the needy, the poor. You came for those living and dying with AIDS. You came for the lynched, the assaulted, the oppressed and the abused, the sex shamed, 
and the doxed. You came for all whose allies betrayed them with a kiss. Jesus, give us the strength to follow your example. Help us to leave our safe places in pursuit of justice and a more colorful world. Give us the compassion to help and hold others, regardless of their names, faces, gender identity, sexuality, or social class. Give us your passion and do not let us stand aside when our friends and family misspeak by misunderstanding intentional omission or from hardened hearts. We pray for strength and determination in this call. In the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus said, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. Quench our thirst for love. Satisfy our need to be known. Assure us that we are indeed prophets of welcome. And let us go to proclaim this peace in God's name. Amen. <laughs>